What are you doing? Uh, I'm cutting off the posts that you put on all your tools in the last video. I see that, thank you. Why? Do you not still read your comments? We got a lot of comments on the last video and many of them were really smart. Multiple people said that all the tools should have just been heads that fit on one common post. That would have saved so much square tubing and it would save even more floor space because the rack that I just made wouldn't even be needed. Instead, maybe all the heads would fit on a wall mounted rack so there wouldn't be anything on the floor. So that's what we're doing today. Thanks guys. The common riser or the post that all the tools are going to use is going to resemble a ratchet extension. It's exactly what it's doing. It's extending the hole in the floor up higher. I'm going to use the post from the tubing bender because it's already very thick wall tubing and I welded a handle onto it to make it much easier to move heavy things around. Upgrading this post was as simple as welding a small section of trailer hitch receiver tubing to the top. The plan for the tool rack is 2 inch square tube held to the wall on L brackets made from angle iron. I'm using thin wall tubing this time because the rack won't need to span the distance the rolling rack did and there won't be as much weight on it since I cut a hundred pounds of posts off. Unfortunately, I don't have an 8 foot piece of 2 inch square but I do have the old stands I can weld together to make 8 feet. I'm going to make each L bracket from one piece of angle iron. In order to get an L shape, I'll remove a 90 degree wedge from one wall, score the other wall, bend it, and weld it. I'm going to trim off the corners so I don't snag any clothing or flesh when I walk by. These brackets will be held to the wall studs with lag bolts. Most of the stress should be at the top, so I'll put two bolts close together there and one closer to the bottom. A little explanation of what's going on in my head because there's a lot going on in my head right now and some of you are probably like what are you doing this tubing is currently eight feet long and you'll notice that there's four-ish feet dangling out here in space with no wall bracket that can be right the tubing is eight feet long because that's how long my original tool rack was and I liked it eight feet long. There was plenty of room for all my tools and there was room for a couple more tools that I want to buy in the very near future. Here's the problem. This is where I want my sheet metal storage to be, up against the wall. At times there will be full four by eight sheets of sheet metal and as you can see, the ends are trapped behind the tool rack. Imagine if you can trying to get a full four by eight sheet of sheet metal out from back behind all these other pieces. Normally I would have slid the sheet metal out to the side, but the rack isn't going to allow that. So currently I'm considering whacking off two feet off of the end of the tool rack, which will bring it down to six feet. Not quite as much room to store tools, but I will at least be able to access my sheet metal. But it's still going to be a pain in the ass to get sheets out from the backside because I cannot slide it out. So to be honest, I'm kind of regretting starting this whole thing because with the rack on wheels, the tools were actually able to take up the same spot on the wall as the sheet metal. And if I needed some sheet metal, all I had to do was roll the rack out away from the wall. Fantastic. So I had some really tall tools. 
so yeah so the question is do i cut two feet off of this bar which is fantastic because i just welded two feet back on if i do that i'm only going to have two wall brackets if i leave it eight feet I'm going to make a third wall bracket. And what I want to do with these wall brackets is create a diagonal support. If I only have two brackets, I'm going to do those diagonal supports. If I have three brackets, I'm not. As it is, I can sit on this bar, 210 pounds. I think they're plenty strong. <sighs> Don't know what to do. I need to think about it. I think I'm going to move on with this as it sits to move the tool receivers onto the tool rack and see what it looks like with tools on it and see how closely I can pack them together. I won't be able to use the tools on the rack, which is what I originally wanted to do, but uh, I may not have a choice, you know? <laughs> that one through. I made sure there was enough room here for the garage door to close so that these wheels wouldn't hit, but I didn't really think of what tool would go that close. So I may end up having to shorten that a little bit. Maybe my shrinker stretcher will fit there. Definitely wouldn't be able to use it, but I don't think I'm really gonna be able to use any of these tools. Very few of the tools I'll be able to use on the rack. Maybe I'll put the shrinker stretcher there and I won't trim that at all. Maybe I'll just tack weld that on there real quick and see if that's a good idea or not. That's a really tight fit, but I like it. It's tight fits like that that really make the most out of every tiny little bit of room that you got. I'm gonna cut off all the other receivers off of the old rack so that I can put them on the new rack. Here's yet another idea that came from the viewers in the comments. I was having trouble with the really tall tool posts toppling over with these set screws in front. So a handful of people said I should put something on the side here to help keep them from tipping over. And check this out. This is not gonna help me with my boarding. It's gonna make it a lot worse. I save stupid stuff like this. What was I thinking? I got little ones, I got big ones. This is just scrap from a previous project I had. I got a whole bunch of little ones. So I'm gonna weld those onto each of the receivers and I think I'm gonna get to use those set screws after all. That said, if you've got ideas, share them in the comments. I don't ignore them, I use them often. Another thing that I think I'm going to do, which is going to not help my hoarding either, is I found one of these set screws that are actually set screws with an Allen head in there. I think I'm gonna run to the hardware store and get a couple of those that are quite a bit smaller. And I also hoard these every time I build an Ikea desk or something and it comes with these, I just can't throw them away. So I've got spare random size Allen keys. Even though I have full sets, I don't need to save them, but saving stuff like this will allow me to actually have one just for the tool rack that I can drill a hole and mount in here somewhere. I think I'm gonna get worse at hoarding if I keep getting rewarded like this. Well, it's dark, yay. It's time to close up shop. This might be a little nerve wracking to find out if the garage door clears that. Miles, miles and miles. Well, it's been a couple days. I had some time to work in the shop on some other things with this staring me in the face. And I've decided I've got most of my tools in a six foot space and it's not bad. So I'm going to cut two feet off right at the end of this last tool. I will still have some room for one or two other tools, maybe. There's not a whole lot of room to work with them, but there is plenty of room to store them all. I figured if I get a lot more tools, I could actually store them underneath the rack with some creative hanging receivers. The last thing I'm doing to the rack in this video, anyways, since I decided to put all the tools on a six foot section, it's just these two wall brackets that's holding the whole thing up and it's pretty thin angle iron. So I'm gonna put some diagonal braces on those so that it doesn't fold and collapse because that would suck, but that's pretty much it. And then I think all that's left after that is to drill and tap the common stand and it'll be ready to use.
A quick recap, in case you started this video at the end, which would be really weird. I have dismantled the rolling tool rack and instead built a wall-mounted version. That was a, uh, a viewer's idea, not mine. And on that wall-mounted rack is all my tools mounted on tiny posts. So just the heads. That was also a viewer's idea. And those heads go on a common riser. One post, several heads. Pretty cool. That, that was also a viewer's idea. And lastly, each individual tool receiver has these fancy little gussets welded on there that help keep them from falling over. So I can still use these set screws and I can slide them to wherever I want. Viewer's idea. So I guess I didn't really contribute much to this video, but I'm okay with that. I guess all I can say is thank you guys. Keep the ideas coming and uh, keep moving forward.